Next to humans, leafcutter ants form one of the largest and most complex animal societies on Earth. The individuals within the ant society create such a tight aggregation they become a superorganism. This superorganism can consist of up to 5 million individuals, all working for one purpose the survival of their colony. In order for the superorganism to thrive, it is dependent on unselfish teamwork. There is no tolerance for ants with individuality, and those that don't pull their weight will be extricated from the colony. This short film will give you a unique glimpse into the workings of a busy leafcutter ant colony. The well-being of the colony rests solely on the welfare of the queen ant. The colony can only exist if the queen is alive and reproductive, as her sole purpose is to be nothing but an egg-laying machine. In her 10-15 to 15 year lifespan, she can lay up to 150 million eggs. Due to her large size, about the size of a baby mouse, she is a completely helpless queen, who is heavily dependent on her subjects. They dedicate themselves to feeding and grooming their ruler in the heart of the nest. It's all about girl power in the leafcutter nest, as the workers are all sisters and daughters of the queen. In terms of the leafcutter ant colony being a superorganism, the worker ants are the mouth, the gut and the eyes of the superorganism, whereas the ovaries are embodied by the queen. The average size of a leafcutter ant colony can contain over 5 million ants. Organisation is the key to the success of such a large colony. It is rare for workers to exhibit any dominance or conflict behaviour and fully cooperate in all the tasks put to them. With so many ants in one nest, the leafcutters have created a system to divide labour. A colony consists of several morphologically distinct castes, each with vital roles that benefit the masses. The most visible workers are the foragers. These ants also divide into subcasts according to size with the largest being the cutters and venturing the furthest, and the smaller foragers staying nearer the nest and collecting leaf fragments dumped by the cutters. The ultimate tool for the leaf cutter ants are their mandibles. These immensely powerful jaws can vibrate up to a thousand times a second, effectively simulating a chainsaw. But having powerful jaws is not enough to make a successful leaf cutter. The cut leaf fragments have to be transported back to the nest. Therefore the cutters need great strength and these particular workers are capable of carrying up to 50 times their own body weight. Generally, the smaller ants, called minims, carry out their duties within the nest. However, it is possible to see the occasional minim appearing to hitchhike a ride back to the nest on a leaf fragment. In fact, these ants are acting as security guards, prepared to swat away any parasitic wasp and flies wanting to attack the vulnerable cutter. The minim ants are the colony's homemakers, and their duties vary considerably. They tend to the colony's brood, garden the fungus crops, clean the nest from unwanted material, and of course, groom and feed their demanding queen. Maintaining a high level of vitality and hygienic condition of the fungus crops is essential for a colony to survive. If the fungus crops are contaminated by parasitic fungi or bacteria, then the whole colony would collapse. Their meticulous cleaning extends to the disposal of any fellow dead workers. The bodies are carried to the furthest point from the nest possible. The number of dead ants builds up over time, and the mounds soon become ant graveyards. The last cast to mention is the muscle section of the community, the soldier ants. Their huge frame make them slow and cumbersome, so the majority of these large soldiers spend their time in the depths of the nest, ready to lay their lives down for the colony's most valuable asset, the queen. Occasionally, if the nest is deemed to be under attack, a fighting patrol of soldier ants will be dispatched. These ants are equipped with razor-sharp, powerful jaws and protection in the form of large spikes along their backs. Leafcutter ants display similarities with humans in terms of social structure, but also in our ability to cultivate food. It is often believed that leafcutter ants eat the plant material they harvest, but this is not the case. The leaf material is mixed in with the ants saliva and excrement to form a substrate on which a specific species of fungus can be cultivated. Leafcutter ants are effectively farmers, 
and with the exception of humans are thought to be the only other animals to grow their own food. The process of cultivating the fungus crops is scientifically precise. The ants that tend to the fungus have to ensure ideal environmental conditions and constantly tend to the fungus, removing any harmful foreign matter. As you have seen, the cooperation of all the different types of leafcutter ants, from the queen down to the soldiers and foragers, is essential in the everyday running of the ant colony. Together, they form an intricate society that, besides humans, is rarely seen in the animal world.